always something that's gotta happen. Hi. It's been a while. My name is Grace, if you're new here. It's been a while if you're even not new here. I'm back at my lovely sewing table because we're gonna be doing another sewing video. I've done a few of these before and I know it's been a while. It's been an interesting uh, end of the year for me. The beginning of my year has been really great. I've just been very, very busy. Um, a lot of exciting things have been happening. I'm in my first show officially since moving to Chicago and it's just been a little hectic with like still working and also doing rehearsals and figuring out my life um, and some things happened at the end of the year last couple months of the last year that were quite rough for me so that's where that's where I've been but so far 2023 has truly been my year and I hope it's been yours and I hope you're looking forward to the rest of the year it's starting to get a little bit warmer here I am in this it's giving it's giving like Joe a little bit from Little Women maybe I don't know I'm giving a little bit of like writer my hair is still wet we're just might throw on a bandana during this video. We, you know, we're just thriving in my day off. Today, we are going to be doing a lot of very simple sewing stuff. Um, in my last sewing video, I did these um, split flannels, like Franken flannels is kind of what I'm calling them. I do not know if someone else has already coined that term. If they have, then it would be theirs, but I have not heard that before. Um, that's just what I've been calling them because I don't really know what else to call them But I did two of those in the last video and now I have found and purchased more many 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 more <laughs> We have a lot we have a lot to do we have like four or five I want to say um, flannels to kind of sew together and I'm only going to be sewing them together today. I'm not going to be swapping out their pockets. I do have a few hand sewing projects as well. So it's just going to be a lot of like pretty simple sewing stuff, nothing too wild like we've done in the last few videos. So I have these two that I'm going to be putting together and I have these two that I'm going to be putting together, some reds. How is my battery already dying? This is this is not a great start to this video. And then I have three more. So we got a um, lemon lime, is what I'm calling that going. And then this kind of more neutral one with the, the yellow and then the neutral with the green as well. So I honestly don't know if I'm gonna keep all of these. I might give them away to people or sell them if people have an interest in those. So if you see any of them that you like, um, I will be keeping the first two, but like the lemon lime kind of vibe. I don't know if I'm gonna wear them consistently. So that might be something that I try to resell. There's also this pair of, um, they're a little confusing and I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell on camera, but they are a pair of pants but they have this like wrap skirt thing that happens around that. It's very odd. I don't really understand it, um, but I have to take this in. And the only issue about taking this in is that it is two layers. So I just don't know if I can only take in the pants because they are a little big if I have to do that in the front instead of in the back or like what's going to happen with that. But they're really cool and I really like them. Um, they're just slightly the slightest bit too big. So I will have to take them in at the waist. And then lastly, these are one of my favorite pair of jeans. They're from Wild Fable, but they are getting a I think that's like a butt hole somewhere. Oh, yeah. There's like a little teeny tiny hole right up here. So I just have to do some hand sewing for that. And I do have to sew the buttons onto one of the um, flannels because the buttons don't line up correctly to where I would be able to button it up. So I have to fix that. And yeah, that's kind of it. So it's like just a lot of very straight pinning and sewing and all that kind of stuff. Shouldn't be too big of a problem. I, it's one o'clock right now. I'm hoping to get this done. 
the next two hours. I don't have to do laundry or anything like that, so I shouldn't have any interruptions, which is great. Okay, so I'm gonna change out my battery and then we will be back. I'm going to, oh, my hair is so wet still. Um, start off, what do I wanna start off with? I'm gonna wait on the hand sewing. I think I'm gonna start on these two. So I will have to pin together. Zipper keeps coming off of this. It's really annoying. Okay, got my trusty pins. Got all my stuff in case something goes wrong, which, as we've seen before in previous episodes, it probably will. And basically, we're just gonna line these up. I was debating like doing a cleaner line with these and maybe folding it over first and sewing it and then doing it but you know I'm just a little too lazy for that to be honest and I don't really care this is the only problem these are not the same length so this is gonna be something that we're probably gonna run into um, so I kind of have to figure out how I want to do this I think I'm just gonna line up that's fine. I'm just gonna line up where they, like where the collar meets so that that is at least similar at the top. I also might listen to some music while I'm doing this. Speed through some of it with you guys just because it kind of gets a little boring just having nothing going on and just hearing me sewing. I'm also going to a Monson concert in a couple of days because my best friend got me tickets to see him and I'm so excited. Her and her boyfriend saw him at a different concert, I want to say like quite a few months ago. I can't remember who he was like opening for, but they saw him and I was like, oh my God, my middle school dreams. I cannot. <laughs> I started listening to him because of Megan Hughes on YouTube. I feel like I mention her in literally every single video, but it's because I watch her videos so consistently still and have since like literally middle school. Um, so she was really into him and like, she used to do these videos called pizza talk videos where she would order pizza and talk with different people. Um, and she had him on a pizza talk one time. And I was very like, oh my God. And I used to listen to a lot of his music. And now he's engaged to Avril Lavigne. If they're still engaged, I don't know. I've been seeing things that was like, they're not engaged anymore. Which I was like, oop, that's a little, that's a little wild for me. Um, kind of like MGK and Megan Fox too. I'm like, are they still together? We're gonna get started. We're just gonna do a lovely um, sew job. Yeah, we're just gonna get going. I have black in my thing. It doesn't really matter because we're not gonna see it. And I mean, black would be fine for this anyway. So here we go. Oh my God. Party foul. <laughs> that was for my bobbin. Is it threaded? Yeah. Everything else is threaded. Why was that still like that? Anywho, okay, round two. All right, that's fine. I don't know how that last bit's gonna look, but okay, it's not terrible. Could be, okay, that's fine. It looks fine on the other side. Okay. Dude, my camera is so weird right now. It's not even my camera, it's the batteries. I don't understand. I may eventually wanna like tack this down and sew it because the edges are just very, I wish I had a serger because I would just use that on the edge, but it's fine. Oh shit. Totally forgot about this. Okay, hold on. So here's, the, ah, God damn. This is worse seam ripping already, folks. This is why I did one that I wasn't super attached to first because Everybody makes mistakes. 
but it has those days. I forgot that basically the collar has to lay down. So for the collar, I have to sew it the other way. So that this, like, the seam doesn't look weird. There's that. There's that seam dripped. Reams. Ream sipped, seam ripped, and then I have to turn them the other way so that when the shirt is regular, it will lay down flat. I don't know if that makes any sense to anyone, but otherwise the collar is gonna stick up and the seam's gonna be on the, the wrong way. So like the raw edge is gonna be weird. So. Here we go. Going the other way. This should be a short fix, so it shouldn't be too bad. Slay. Beautiful. Yes, okay. And I've been doing, I need like, I need to like press this, because I think that will, would help, but that's the problem is that I don't have a iron. Um, but that doesn't look too terrible, so basically, this is them together, and then the collar's there, and then there they are. And the inside is a little janky looking, you know, it looks a little bit rough, but I could, you know, finish that off if I wanted to, but okay, that's one. One, one done. We're still on a positive groove after I figured that out. This is the one that I will need to swap the buttons on because both of these have the button holes right now, um, which is good because I don't have to put button holes into them because I'm kind of bad at that. Um, but it does mean that I will just have to sew them up but I have the buttons in this lovely little pocket here. So we can do that. And I think it has, yeah. Most of these flannels have the same amount of buttons. And if they're, that's the thing is a lot of like men's flannels go one way and women's flannels go another way. So I think that's the cut, that's the problem that I was having. Men's flannels don't, oh, this is so much longer. Oh God, okay. Um, oh, I still want the collars to line up. That's so frustrating. It's just, it's just a little quirky thing with these is that some of them are going to be longer and some of them are going to be shorter. And I tried to match up sizes as best as I possibly could, but it really just depends on the build of the flannel. And it's just part of the charm, you know? It's part of the charm of a thrift flip. Plus, you know, that's the other thing. If I was selling these two, which, which is why I tried to match up some of them if I want to sell them, um, I would, again, be more concerned with that, but unless I'm gonna make a business out of this. Like, these are just, I'm gonna wear these, most of them, um, so I don't really care. About it being it's just really like the other one wasn't as bad but this one is like really big of a difference yeah that doesn't look terrible i don't like it but i don't hate it i hope it still covers my butt though because i like to wear these with like leggings and stuff like that perfect so we can go back up here and do 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 I think also what would help with my flipping this inside out is making sure that it's, you know, a little bit lower than where the collar is so that it will really fold over and sit the way that I want it to. I'm not an expert. I don't really know what I'm doing. So I just try things and freaking hope for the best. And usually it comes out at least half decent. Okay, now we're gonna do it. So you don't hate that. It's a little wonky and a little bit weird, but could be worse. Just the nature of the flannels being different sizes. Let's see how it looks. One. Looks a little. Okay, 
not terrible. The butt isn't terrible either. Doesn't really cover my butt on this side, but like, that's okay. It's close enough. Okay, I don't hate that. I like these colors together too, so that's kind of my main, main jive with that. Um, I will have to fix the buttons on this so we can do that later, but there's, there's number two. Number two is done. Um, we can move on to these after, because I think these should line up a little bit easier, but we'll see, we'll see, you know. Again, so sorry if anything changed. My camera batteries are really just not feeling the vibe today. I just don't want us to do this. I'm pretty sure this is the same brand and I got the same size and I'm pretty sure it's the same fit. So hopefully these will be the same and will line up properly. Seems like they're going to, but you know, you never know. Target likes to really mess with me sometimes. Okay, so yeah, um, anyway, I don't even remember what I was talking about at this point, but um, yeah, I hope your year has been good with the beginning of 2022. I know we're into March now, so we're almost a, what, fourth of the way through the year already, which is crazy. Um, but I feel like no time has passed and yet so much time has passed. It's starting to get warmer here in Chicago. It's also kind of not starting to get warmer here in Chicago yet, but we're, we're in that false spring phase. If any of you have ever lived in either the Midwest or New England, um, very, very similar with their kind of seasonal changes and differences and like how things work. You think that you're done with winter and then snow comes back to haunt you. That's kind of where where my mind is at right now with all of that. And okay, so pretty much the same length. Slightly off, but compared to the other one, this, this is it's child's play in comparison. Um, so that's good. Those should line up pretty well. But yeah, I I got cast in this show and so I've been doing that and been meeting some new people and having a lot of new experiences that have been very positive, but also like a little bit emotionally a lot. Um, so <laughs> it's it's been a lot this year, but it's it's been a very good and it will end up being a very positive thing in my life. It's just all happening at the same time and can get a little overwhelming sometimes, but you know, that's what being a human is about sometimes. Hold <laughs> oh, on, something is happening. Oh, wow, Grace. Nope, that's on me. That's definitely on me. Okay, yeah. That's what happens when you don't put the uh, the little foot down. I don't know what that's called, but I can't think of what it's called right now. <sighs> There's always something that's gotta happen. Nothing can ever go the way that you want it to. So that one was a little weird and rocky, I think, just because it kept getting caught in like the threads of this green thing. Like, I don't know why they're so wonky, but. No, it looks pretty good. Slay, okay. That looks pretty good. Um, yeah, so it's just been a lot of like changes um, for me and with work and stuff like that too. Like last year I got a promotion, so that was a change. And then there's been a lot of like things that have happened, both good and bad. So there's been a lot of, just a little bit of chaos and I'm doing this show so it's hard because I can't really be as much as of a support as I would like to be for people there. So it's just kind of one of those things and I also have realized how much working a retail job really like drains me mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, I honestly don't know if I've talked about this on the channel before but I 
over a year ago, just barely over a year ago, I got diagnosed with autism officially. So maybe I will make a video talking about that now that it's been a year. Um, I can't believe I don't think I've ever talked about that. But with that diagnosis, it's brought a lot of clarity for me about why I feel the way I do, why it takes me so long to like recover at the end of the day and come back and why I'm just so emotionally drained after I am at work. And it's hard because for a lot of autistic individuals, um, working is really difficult. And like if I could just do this all the time or edit videos or do something creative or like have an acting career full time, I would be much better and obviously I'd still be stressed and like still have to really calm down at the end of the day and like process things um because social interaction can be a lot for me sometimes and I've been doing a lot of that so it's just finding that balance of how do I handle being able to do the things I want and meet people and work and not have a mental breakdown every time I get home it's just not it's not a fun fun way to balance things um so it's hard. There's not a lot of disability support and stuff like that out there for anyone, whether you have a chronic illness or, you know, any sort of mental illness as well. So that's been really, really fun. Um, and you just kind of have to suffer through it, which you should not have to do. So it's been a lot. It's really hard because I don't hate going to work. I love the people that I work with. I just hate having to deal with other people who are a lot of the times really mean and don't have respect for like customer service workers. And it's just a lot of masking. Like it's a lot of me forcing myself to present how I think people expect other people to present in society and social interactions and uh, sometimes that's really difficult and drains a lot of you so here we go all done with that looks pretty good i'm happy with that one too we've got two more of this style left and then okay there we go there we go um then we will move on to doing the pants and doing some alterations on those and then I will finish off with the hand sewing buttons and um my other pants and maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that too but yeah it's just it's really difficult and obviously you know people have their own opinions about oh you know you need to work you need to contribute to society blah 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 you need to be able to pay for things. And that's kind of the, the the rub, if you will, is that yes, I do have to work in order to survive. Um, and usually, I mean, right now I'm working two jobs. I've had three jobs at one point. I'm also performing in a show, which I would kind of consider another job in itself. So I guess you could say that I do have three jobs right now because I am getting paid to perform in this show. Um, so it is a lot to balance. And I feel like, you know, I've been doing my best, obviously, with like line memorization. That's one thing. But I don't feel like I've had the time to do character work and like really delve into my character's motivation and the things that I want to break down in this show because I just don't have the mental energy for it and when I have the mental energy I um really want to make sure that I'm you know getting my lines down and working on the logistics of remembering blocking and that kind of stuff which is kind of the basics of being an actor and being in a show and that's the stuff that like you should really know very very well for whatever show you're in so you want to get that down but you also want to have time to be able to develop your character and you know our rehearsal process we we don't have a lot of rehearsals we definitely have enough rehearsals but 
it's a faster process. Um, we're only doing three rehearsals a week and it's not like we have rehearsals for seven hours every day. So we're not really spending consistent, conti like continuous time thinking about it. Um, so it's hard for me because when I get home, Honestly, I the last thing I want to do most of the time, like I have to force myself to run my lines sometimes because I'm just so exhausted from my other job and like what's happening there. Or I want to be able to still see people and do the things I want to do and meet up with my friends and have like some sort of a social life. So it's just one of those weird situations where if I had a work from home job or if I had the ability to not not have a job because I know I would get bored too, but be doing the things that I want to do and make enough money to survive on it. Like that would be a very different situation, you know, and like every job has its issues, whether you're doing what you want in professional theater or art or photography or whatever like every job is going to have something that you hate about it and is going to have people that you dislike and people that you don't necessarily get along with um but when you're when when the other factors are already taken care of like when you're getting paid enough and you don't have to worry about paying your rent and surviving and like living life as a human um you kind of can work through any of the the interpersonal issues a lot easier because you're doing what you want to do most of the time most of the people you work with are going to be a positive experience and you're going to have a good rapport with them and you're also getting paid enough that you don't have to worry about you know getting to your next job and actually paying the bills so and it's it's not just a it's not necessarily just a artistic or creative career issue but it is definitely something that is more prominent in that area and um just i've been thinking about that a lot lately and it's really frustrating and you know i think that we should just have some sort of baseline income so people can afford to feed themselves and clothe themselves and pay for shelter because those are basic human rights and why do we have to just focus all of our money on that yeah that's that's my two cents and i'm gonna sew this and then we'll talk a little bit more about that All right, so that's done. Um, continuing this conversation, you know, people are really, really split down the middle about this. And personally, I think it's a human rights thing. So I don't think it's something that you can really be split about. Um, and it's ironically the people who like would need the support the most that are sometimes like this. And I get it. Like you are a hardworking person. You want to be able to earn like what you deserve and feel like people should work hard. And that's totally great and valid. And I absolutely agree with that. Like, I don't think that, um, everyone needs to be handed everything in life. However, <laughs> with how the world has been and with how prices of things have been rising and, you know, people are still not getting paid what they should be in comparison to the inflation of goods and services and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's something that would only help us. And I don't think that it would necessarily mean that people are still not going to do their jobs and not want to work. It would just put the pressure off of some people and have people be able to stimulate the economy again and buy houses and put their money back into the economy and everything that we have. So I saw an article recently and I'm a little bit in the middle because I'm not a millennial, but I am not also not Gen Z. I would say, I think they call us Gen X. I was born in 98. So I just turned 25 and I don't really identify fully with a lot of the millennial stuff, but I don't identify fully with Gen Z either. So I have a lot of experiences that millennials have had that I, you know, was born in the 90s, but I grew up in the early 2000s and 
Um, I didn't have a cell phone until I was, I was in sixth grade, but I had like a flip phone and then I didn't get like an iPhone until I was a sophomore or junior in high school. So I didn't necessarily grow up on the internet. The internet developed in like my teen years. Um, so I wouldn't say that I am Gen Z because I feel like they more so, you know, have had the internet around, have had it more widely accessible. I mean, I grew up and didn't, we didn't get Wi-Fi, I want to say, until I was in sixth grade, like until I started going more consistently to school in a way that I would have like a computer in my bedroom or it was like the dial up screen. I remember putting like floppy disks or CDs into this giant, huge, huge computer. Anyway, long tangent to explain this article that I saw, but it was basically saying that millennials aren't stimulating the economy anymore and aren't like buying houses or whatever because they're covering their basic needs. And just the way that it was phrased, I was like, yeah, because they can't afford to buy goods the way that we used to be able to or like the way your parents could because we don't have the extra money. They're spending all of their money on rent or, you know, they're going into credit card debt because of all of that happening and how that has influenced people as well. And they're spending their money on food and clothing and shelter for themselves. Oh shit. Fuck. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk more while I refit this because that did not work. Um, and it was just, it honestly made me laugh at how ridiculous it was because, and then I think it was either that article or it was the same article or it was another article that was like almost paired with that article that suggested skipping breakfast in order to like save up money to stimulate the economy. And I was like, this is honestly the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Like, yeah. No, I would like to eat breakfast. I would like to take care of my basic needs rather than spending frivolous money that I don't have to stimulate the economy. Like if you're going to make us, if you want us to do that, maybe, maybe you should give us more pay or you should give us some sort of base income so we have the extra money to be able to do that. It was just like, I was like, what? I don't understand where you're coming from with that. It's very similar with, um, and I don't want to, you know, stereotype, but a lot of the time it is the boomer generation that just doesn't understand, like, people not having the money to buy a house. And they're like, oh yeah, stop buying Starbucks so that you can put a down payment on the house. And I'm like, dude, what house is not at least, if not more than that, $200,000, depending on where you are. In a general sense, throughout the entire country, that's probably, $200,000 to $300,000 is probably an average, maybe more like four hundred dollars to five hundred, dollars if we're being honest. Who has that type of money? Who has now the credit to be able to get loans for that type of money. Who? Where would I get that money ever in my life? I am like barely surviving working 40 hours at a job that is not paying me minimum wage, but is paying me a little bit more than like city minimum wage. And I still can barely afford to live in this apartment by myself. Here is what that looks like. Cutie cutie. Bottom looks pretty good still. Yeah, came out, came out well too. So, like that one. And then, then I just have one more left, which is the yellow and this. Yeah, it really just astounds me because I think the average minimum wage right now is like still $7 and something, $7.25 I wanna say. It is more in the city. It is almost double in the city. I think it's, 
$15 an hour here because of how our um, city prices for everything is more, so they do increase the minimum wage because of that, um, which, you know, makes sense if you're living in a city, but still, still making $15 an hour is not enough, even if you're, and most people aren't working 40 hours at that rate either. They're working, you know, part time. So they're getting like maybe 20, 25, 30 hours at most. So they're working multiple jobs. And then you have to think the logistics of scheduling and does your, is your job flexible with that kind of stuff? Um, so you are not making a lot of money in a year. You're really not. And then you're paying half at least, if not more of that, toward your rent, toward your necessities, toward your food, toward your electric bills. And it's just, how am I supposed to do anything with that? How am I supposed to save money with that? How am I supposed to buy a house? How am I supposed to even like renting sometimes? You know, it's just like I, and then if you're having kids, you have to pay for that. Like, I don't even want children. And I'm still like, how am I gonna, I can barely take care of my freaking self. First of all, how would you expect me to afford to take care of another human? How would you expect me to afford to birth another human? First of all, it's at least like $30,000, I would say, depending on what kind of insurance you have. I don't know what insurance covers for medical when it comes to pregnancy and birth like it's just absolutely insane it's insane it's uh, it's crazy <sighs> there's so many people especially celebrities or very wealthy like businessmen or you know politicians who are just so far removed from the reality of what it is like to be someone who is lower to middle class and like working in in America. This is all reference to America because obviously it's very different in a lot of other countries. Um, yeah, they just don't get it. They really don't get it. And these are the people that are making our laws. I'm gonna finish sewing this and then we're gonna move on. So I think that's that for this one other than doing the top bit. And then, you know, people wonder why we have issues with like child exploitation on YouTube and people wanting to make money off of their children and marketing to that. And it's like, yeah, because these people don't, first of all, they like want an easy way to make money, which, you know, valid, okay? Does everyone wants to be able to not do anything and make enough money to survive? However, do I think the solution is exploiting your child online, especially as someone who has now been diagnosed and like is thinking about if my parents had ever made any sort of videos of like me in middle school and my experiences or even just like me as an autistic person if they had known when I was younger. It, I, absolutely not. Would not have wanted that on the internet. Would not have wanted people to see that, people at school. I had a YouTube channel when I was in middle school and going into high school and it's the same channel. I've had it for a long time. And there are some like cringy videos on here. And you know, I just own up to that now because I'm an adult. I never did anything that I really would regret people seeing because I still understood at that age that the internet was forever and that wasn't necessarily something that I learned from my parents but it was something that I really did clearly understand um but a lot of kids don't and their parents don't understand that and they just kind of like force them to be in that world but they make a lot of money doing it so I understand I understand the reasoning why I don't agree with it but I understand why just it's not a valid reason like it's not a good reason but I understand why they do it it's just very ironic because I feel like a lot of celebrities go the opposite way with their children because they don't want their children to be exposed to the media and to be 
exposed to that so early on um and i read jeanette mccurdy's book recently which is incredible if you haven't already read it i'm glad that my mom died i think is the full title um absolutely go and read it it's an incredible honestly commentary on child exploitation more of in a lens of being a child actor but also has a lot of factors of like her mom forcing her to do things that she didn't necessarily want to do in that regard and there's the back bottom isn't the best but don't hate it so those are all done it's just a really interesting conversation because a lot of people who are famous and are celebrity celebrities or are well-known actors or anything like that won't post their children on social media and are very private about their children and it's a lot of because they understand what it feels like to be bombarded in that way and have media in your face at all times and have people looking at you at all times and like they may have developed that following and may have become a celebrity for whatever reason but your child didn't ask for that. They didn't ask to be born to you specifically. They didn't ask to be in this experience. They did not have that happen to them. They are forced into it because you are their parent, but um, I don't think that should be something that they are forced into because they can't choose it. Like you should do everything you can to protect them from that. That's just my opinion. Anyway, lots of heavy topics here. I'm gonna move on to these these pants and I just don't really know what I want to do with them, to be honest. I feel like, yeah, this might be the best place for me to take these in. Um, there's a couple of spots in the back of them that would probably be good that seeming to be lining up with both, yeah, okay. There's too much fabric and there's, oh, okay, so they literally, yeah, they pulled this all the way up. This garment is just fair. Okay, no, it's on both sides. Never mind. I'm incapable of looking at things properly. Um, I think I'm just going to do. Oh, I don't know if I can. Hmm. I don't know if I can take this in without it being weird pucker thing. Looks like a butthole. I'm gonna have to figure this out off camera because once again my battery is dying and I don't know what is going on with this so we're gonna try to figure this out and then I will come back to you and tell you what I'm doing. I don't know if you can really tell what is going on with these pants right now but <laughs> up here we've got a little bit of space so I'm actually gonna take it in the front because there are some darts going down and I'm just gonna take the slightest bit in because these pants are rather stretchy um but i think it'll be fine and then yeah there's these two wrap things that like has a skirt attached to it on the edge i don't know i don't it's hard to tell on camera but basically like i would tie this together and then it's like you can see the pants peeking through but the skirt is kind of like over it it's almost like a skirt kind of situation it's really fucking cool but it's just a slightly bit too big and it feels like it's gonna fall off my body, but the rest of it like fits really well and it won't make it past my hips, but I just want it to fit a little bit snugger. Um, so we're gonna try that and see how that works. Okay, also I did add on this flannel because I was a little cold and you know, it's, it's fitting. Teeniest, tiniest little blip in there and then we'll try them on after and see how that first of all did not realize that there were three little seam things so i think i am going to take it in just a hint more i think that'll be perfect because it is still a little bit wide but i was like oh no i only did the side one and the middle one and there's one over here too so i will just do that and that doesn't look too like it's not too pouchy down here um, but if I needed to, I could make that a little bit more seamless, but I think with the tying and stuff, you don't really notice it. Like, if I'm moving around, if I'm moving around, it's fine. So I'm gonna finish this one, and then that should be good. And honestly, I think I'm gonna wear these pants tomorrow. Like, I lose where the, the everything is in these pants so quickly. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so there's one, two, and then... 
one. Probably the quickest fix that I've done like that, which is honestly not a bad thing. And y'all, I didn't even have to fix my bobbin at all during this. So proud. Yep, so I don't know if you can see in the light, but there's three little pleats there. And this is the rest of the pant. If I like pull away the skirt bit, you can kind of see the pants. Yeah, does that make any sense? I don't know if that makes any sense, hold on. Yeah, there's the pants and then it has the skirt attached to it like this. So it's wild, it's wild guys such a cool piece. So I'm going to finish up doing the buttons on the other flannel that I have and then just sew that hole in those pants and then that is that is all that I have. So thank you. I don't know how long this video was but um, it only took me about an hour-ish, maybe a little over an hour, to finish that which I'm very shook by. I'm very surprised by. We didn't have that many mishaps today. We normally have quite a few mishaps and it takes me like three hours to get through everything. <laughs> But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below for more. Please give me your thoughts on the things that we talked about today and, you know, just keep it respectful. I don't care if you have a different opinion than me. You can absolutely share that in a very respectful way in the comments. Um, also, if y'all know anything about cameras and why my battery is showing half percent when I just charged it and it said it was full, Please let me know. I have a Canon camera. I have Canon and non-Canon batteries and they were both doing the same thing. So actually the Canon battery did show full, but it went really, went through it really fast. But anywho, I don't know what's going on. I'll figure that out later. Uh, but yeah, if you would like more, I think I already said you can subscribe down below. I'm hopefully going to be getting back into doing consistent videos, but I feel like I say that every time I come on here and do a new video. So you might see me soon, you might not, but if you want other content from me, it will be linked on the screen. My previous video will be on this side and my previous vlog will be on that side. I haven't done this in a while, so it might be flip-flopped, but they're on the screen right now. You can check them out or check out the rest of the videos on my channel. And I will see you in my next video, whenever that is.